I am so excited to be here. Okay, let's just address it. What do we think? What do we think of the outfit? Do we like it? <laughs> Thank you. I, was, I wasn't sure. I got in the mirror and I was like, this is giving the energy of that girl who took the bachelorette party too seriously. <laughs> and then I was like, but that's who I am. You know what I mean? <laughs> if you try to reschedule Magic Mike, I will yell at you. <laughs> that's my vibe. I'm sticking to it. I think women's fashion is getting kind of out of control lately, though. Like, I don't know when we decided that every shirt had to be attached to our crotches. <laughs> every new shirt I buy is either like, it's half a shirt or it never ends. <laughs> it just starts, start, everything, all one thing. The other day I was wearing a onesie, the ladies know what that is, the one at the top, the duh, under a jumpsuit, which is the duh, the duh, the duh, right? <laughs> and then I had to go to the restroom and I realized there were 13 metal doors <laughs> between me and peeing. <laughs> And I was like, this is so stupid. Why am I keeping up with these trends? And then I thought about it, I was like, this would have been great when I was in college. Cause it would have slowed me down, you know? <laughs> Just like a quick little like, I'll be right back, fave. And then I'd be like, snap, snap, snap. I don't even like him like that. Snap, snap, snap. <laughs> I had a fun hoe phase. I loved it. It was great. It was great. I don't regret a second of it. It was fantastic. I got to explore. I got to try new things. I highly recommend a hoe phase. <laughs> But I grew up in Texas, and so it was a little limiting. And now that I'm here and like watching some of my friends have their hoe face, I'm jealous. <laughs> I'm not gonna, a California hoe face looks glorious. <laughs> there's just, you know what I mean? There's more scenery, there's mountains, there's trees. <laughs> there's so many places to be a hoe. <laughs> Also, some of my friends, my lady comedian friends, have gotten to explore in very different ways. You know what I mean? Like, most of the guys I hooked up with were like, drummers. Yeah, that was it. <laughs> but like, I have three friends that have fucked magicians. <laughs> three! You know how fun it must be to have someone be like, is this your clit? And it is, like... <laughs> I'll never know. I'll never know that experience. <laughs> you know monogamous, but I love my husband. I've been married four years now, wow. <laughs> Thank you, we just celebrated our anniversary and it just, it went by so fast. Like 2019, we were newlyweds and then 2020, we were fighting to be weds and <laughs> 2020 was hard. 2020 was really, really hard. Like lockdown was the hardest part of my marriage because I realized that like me and my husband, we have the perfect outside relationship. <laughs> we are built for outside. I'm an extrovert, I'm bubbly, I'm outgoing. I make friends easily. I make connections. When we go to a party, I'm talking to everybody. He's an introvert, he's a deep thinker. When we go to a party, he's holding my purse. <laughs> <laughs> we had a system and then the world ended and changed the system. <laughs> I love introverts, but y'all are annoying as hell. <laughs> Y'all are annoying because you're so bold on the internet. <laughs> you're so bold. You have so many negative things to say about extroverts, how we're dumb and shallow and talk so much and da 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 But who's gonna send your steak back? <laughs> who's gonna tell him you said oat milk, not whole milk? <laughs> you're gonna grab your ankles in pain rather than have a confrontation. It's the extroverts. <laughs> We make the world go round, damn it. Uh, I'm, I'm very extroverted and outgoing, you know. I like, I like talking to people, I'm a people person. Uh, I have learned since moving to LA though, that's not encouraged here. <laughs> At first I thought everyone was rude. I was like, why is everyone so rude? I smile, no one smiles back. But then I had a couple conversations and I was like, oh, everyone's crazy. That makes sense. <laughs> But like, there's just so much crazy around you. Everyone's just trying to protect themselves from the crazy and get from one place to the next. That's all it is, is just avoiding an interaction with someone who might be insane. <laughs> As being a female comedian, I have to be like extra safe. You know, I'm always thinking about things. And I tell people like how unsafe it can be and they don't believe me. But like the other day I was walking to an open mic and this guy rolled down his window and started yelling at me. I just ignored him. And then he kept yelling. And then I heard his car door open. And then I just ran the opposite way into traffic, like uh, almost into traffic, kept running, ran all the way to open mic. I get there and one of my guy friends is like, what the hell, are you okay? I told him the whole story and he was like, why would you do that? You could have got hit by a car. I'm like, yeah, I could have got hit by a car. But if I got hit by a car, no judge would be like, mm, 
what were you wearing though? <laughs> what were you, like, do you think you maybe led the car on? I just want to make sure. <laughs> Let's not throw. <laughs> I just don't want to ruin this car's future. You know what I mean? It might be good at sports. That wouldn't happen. I took my chances with the car. And I do it again. It's just every day or something to be, ugh, something to be anxious about, but I'm trying to be not so anxious. I got on Lexapro recently. Isn't that funny? It's so, I've had mental health issues my whole life, and I'm telling you, 10 years ago, I would be like, so I found out I have anxiety, and I don't know if you still want to be my friend. I promise it's not contagious. <laughs> but now we just rip our medications like they're little gangs. <laughs> I said Lexapro in the back, I was like, Lexapro gang, what up with it? Like, <laughs> we're about to start shouting out milligrams. It's a bonding experience. <laughs> I love that for us. It's new for me. I, um, I, my therapist was like, okay, we need to get you on that. And then I, I had questions. So I was like, is this one of those medications that has like a high side effect of suicide? And she was like, oh no, that's just in very young people. <laughs> I was like, you just called me old. <laughs> so now I'm at risk for suicide. Don't do that. <laughs> I got a friend who's having a BBL. Do you guys know what a BBL is? No, okay. This is surprising. I am not in LA. <laughs> So a BBL stands for a Brazilian butt lift. And basically what happens is the doctor goes in and basically, he kind of moves your fat around from the good areas to the quote unquote bad areas. It's gentrification for your booty. <laughs> they kind of just like doctor up a new ass. I think some of them look really good. Some are terrifying, <laughs> not gonna lie. But my friend who wants to get it, I, was, I wasn't trying to talk her out of it, but I had to look into it and I realized that I did the research on it. Did you know BBLs have the same death rate as open heart surgery? Oh. That's crazy. I can't believe so many young women are getting it. Now, now that I know that, if I ever need one, if I ever need open heart surgery, <laughs> tell the doctor to move some shit around before I go down. Just, you know, throw it in there. Uh, <laughs> No, I'm trying to be body neutral. I'm trying to be like, I love my body no matter what size it is. I don't care. The, you know, it's the, it's the antithesis of body positive because it's not, you can't love your body every day. Body positivity is not realistic. Body neutrality is where it's at, okay? Just, it's just a house for your soul, right? <laughs> right? We're all on the same page. That's how I thought I felt until I went to my local Torrid. For the plus size girls, that is the jail where we buy clothes. <laughs> I went to my local Torrid and I found out that according to their sizing system where I used to be a zero, I am now a size one. And I had a full panic attack. I was like, you mean to tell me I'm not the littlest bitch in the big bitch store? But I was the itty bitty bitch before. What has happened to me? Oh no. I was telling you guys about being married before. Um, I love my husband, I love his family. That is like the big adjustment is the cultural divide. And people don't think there will be one because it's like, oh, you're both Americans, but like he's a white American, okay? And I'm a black American. Those are just different, Culture, there are cultural differences. Like honestly, being a part of his family is like being a spy now. <laughs> I get to see things I never thought I'd see up close. <laughs> like, you know that thing where white people go to restaurants and they like finish their plate and they go, I hated it. They do that at home. <laughs> you know, like how they're like potluck stuff, jiggles. I know the recipes. It's amazing. So I get to be part of two worlds. It's also great because when I get in arguments with my actual family, you know, my, bio my biological family, I have an extra card now. Anytime me and my mom fight, I'm just like, you know what? My white mom would never treat me like this. <laughs> she don't like that. <laughs> she don't like that one bit. I love it, it's so fun. I'm just like, my white mom loves me more. It's so great. <laughs> I mean, I do it over the phone because she can hit me, but <laughs> it feels good. I said it one time and I, I think my in-laws heard it, but I didn't really think anything of it. And then we went to the mall together as a family, me and my husband and my in-laws. And then I got bored and I wandered off and my father-in-law found me and he yelled out, I knew you'd be at Starbucks. Your white daddy knows ya. <laughs> 
And that's not the kind of thing you can yell in front of an Auntie Anne's. People are looking, <laughs> they're confused. So I was like, oh no, I'm so sorry. Uh, I mean, I know I called your wife my white mama, so I understand why you thought you were my white dad, but you can't be my white daddy. Don't do that. Uh, so it's, it's just, there's a weird kind of, technically your son is my white. I'm not comfortable with that either. I, I hate it all. I really just have one black daddy and I don't, that's, that's weird too. It's all weird. We need to take separate cars home. That's my time. I'm Jasmine Ellis. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.